Euclid aims to take a color picture of half the sky. And to interpret the color picture, we need to get the colors right, in particular, also the three infrared colors. And calibrating those colors and verifying they are such that we can get galaxy distances is our job here at MPIA. MPIA has played a key role in the instrumentation going into this satellite. And the goal here is to bring together all the brightest minds in the field so that we can make sure that as soon as we get the Euclid data, we will be able to identify these first supermassive black holes in the universe. It goes back actually over 20 years. When we had envisioned a little mission to map the sky deeper than ever to find the targets for the James Webb Space Telescope. At the same time, our French colleagues had an other mission planned out to measure dark energy. But we realized when we combine those two missions, what we can do is both learn about dark energy and what drives our universe apart, and at the same time create a treasure trove that gives us astronomical objects that we can study for generations to come. So the first instrument is a wonderful imaging camera called VIS. It's uh, operating in the visible wavelength, so you could see the light. The second instrument, called NISP, Near Infrared Spectrometer and Photometer, uh, operates in the reddish light that we can't see anymore. So it's the so-called near infrared light uh, that is too red uh, for us to see. Now that we are approaching to the launch, uh, there are very, very skillful and scientists here in this institute working and on the calibration, and this is critical, right? So if we don't understand the calibration properly, then it's very hard to do real science. So we really need to appreciate all the work that the calibration team at MPIA is doing for the whole community. Uh, I was um, responsible for um, making sure that the um, engineers that are building part of the NISP instrument understand what the scientists want. I, as a calibration scientist, I need to make them happy with perfect data and on the other hand, uh, I have the spacecraft which can do certain things, uh, but also it is very restricted in what it can do uh, by the hardware choices that were made by industry. Um, and then there's also the software side because we have huge amounts of data that we need to process and uh, we, we have to push the algorithms to, to the limit of uh, what can currently be done. Yeah, so um, I work as the Euclid Calibration Support Scientist. So basically what that means is I am supporting the main calibration scientists and we work on calibration for Euclid. So what we work on is we look at a lot of the data and the idea is to make sure that the data that we receive can be calibrated well so that uh, Euclid can perform on the science that it was meant to do. I work on the simulation side, and so we are simulating what Euclid will see um, when it launches, um, and then using those simulations to test the what we call the ground system, like processing of the data from how it comes down raw from the um, telescope, the instruments on board the telescope, to eventually how it will look when the scientists actually start looking at it. We have a bunch of inputs that we put in. Here's a list of galaxies, stars, um, and characteristics of the detectors, uh, the near-infrared near detectors on board Euclid. Now we're all working together to, towards this common goal, which I think is, is quite unique. So like every mission, it starts with a short incredibly exciting nerve-wracking phase of the launch, hopefully to happen in the next few days. And the first thing that has to happen is actually step-by-step step making sure Euclid works as intended, that is called commissioning and verification. These are uh, two months during which we check out uh, every system of the satellite, measure its true performance. So once Euclid has launched, we will take a lot of data, uh, particularly calibration data, in order to uh, calibrate the, the, the data that comes off of Euclid and to make sure that it is well calibrated so that Euclid can meet its science goals. Euclid will stay. Euclid data will provide a treasure trove uh, of data um, that I and you know, many, many others 
all the astrophysicists around the world can draw from.